On April 14th in New York City, an outstanding group of activists gathered to talk about the situation in Palestine, Israel. They began by talking about the question, does Israel have a right to exist? Does Palestine have a right to exist? People often ask the question, does Israel have the right to exist? And do you believe it has the right to exist? Is because there are certain sections of the media which have within their interests this idea that Israel's existence is constantly under threat. So it's not, if it's not Ahmadinejad now, it was Saddam Hussein before. Israel's existence is not under threat. Quite the opposite. Israel is expanding on a daily basis. Just ask the people in the West Bank who are getting thrown out of their homes on a daily basis for no reason other than the fact they are Palestinian. So this is the real issue, the real crux of the issue, is as Horia said, Palestine does exist, and um, they should just ask the people who had mandate over the land before it became Israel. What was it called? It was called the British Mandate of Palestine. Um, now, aside from the moral question of is this right or wrong, I think the question needs to be asked, does the two-state solution exist? anymore. Now, last summer, I was living with a Palestinian family in Jerusalem in the neighborhood, neighborhood called Sheikh Jarrah, the Hanin family. And on the day after my 19th birthday, we were evicted from their home to make way for foreign settlers, American and British citizens. Now, when people are talking about the two-state solution, they're ignoring the facts on the ground. The settlements in the West Bank, Israeli settlements, are no longer some kind of caravan outpost, outposts, they're cities. And in regards to Jerusalem, I would like people who talk about a two-state solution to find me one Israeli or one Palestinian who will accept Jerusalem to be the capital of the other and not their own capital. So really, I think there are many other issues as well, of course, in regards to Gaza. I was living in Gaza for two months and I can't see how the situation of Gaza now, the people were living under a crippling siege would change. There is no realistic two-state solution being put forward. Now, in light of this, I think it's important that the dialogue starts to change. What really needs to happen is a solution where everyone living in the land of Palestine can live together as equal citizens of one democratic state, whether you're Israeli or Palestinian or Jewish or Christian or Muslim, because this isn't an argument between the Jewish people living in Palestine and the Muslim. It's not. It's simply right and wrong. And if we want to see a future, a just solution where everyone can live peacefully together, I think that's the only way that's going to happen. Thank you. Now, Jody and I were getting along very well until now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to go there. We could discuss it later if people in the audience want to pursue that topic. Uh, on a technical point, uh, the phrase right to exist does have a history. It comes from UN Resolution 242, where it speaks about the right of all states in the region to have secure borders, which is a reasonable demand to make on all states and peoples in the regions. But then that right to exist within secure borders began to change. And it's important to understand why it began to change. 
There are some oldsters in the room, roughly of my age cohort, and so they'll remember a long, long time ago that the man that Israel used to make was that the Palestinians had to recognize UN Resolution 242. And then after the Palestinians recognized UN Resolution 242, the Israeli government said, but 242 does not explicitly name Israel. It just refers to all states in the region. So now Israel changed its demand and it said, we want you to recognize just, not just 242, we want you to recognize 242 and recognize Israel. After the Palestinians did that, then it became recognize Israel's right to exist. And then it became Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state. And it was perfectly obvious what was happening, namely that Israel kept raising the ante, trying desperately to evoke a negative reaction by the Palestinians so they can claim that it's the Palestinians who are obstructing a resolution of the conflict, not Israel. I think what we ought to do is just <clears throat> stick with what the UN resolutions and the international law require, and no resolutions and no international law requires that you recognize a state's right to exist. What you have an obligation to do under the UN Charter is to recognize the right of every state in the region to be free from threats or use of force. That's an obligation. That seems to me reasonable. Uh, there's no reason to go beyond that, uh, especially because it becomes an endless uh, series of demands by Israel which are purposely escalated so that they can never be met.